Hello friends, welcome to the stream. Sorry for those slight audio issues on my end. But I think we're all good to go now. So, time to jump back into Deadly Premonition. The Director's Cut. Previously during the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome. Sheriff George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. You feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. So, <laughs> yeah, directors bleep. So, uh, the those of you who were here at the end of last time will remember. We're exploring this lumber mill. We found Anna, or we went to the, the scene of the crime where Anna's body was found and found this bit of metal that led us to the old abandoned lumber mill from when the town was a flourishing hive of activity. We've been in here, we've been exploring around doing some investigating and we got cornered in this room by the raincoat killer and his big axe. But uh, we hid under a desk and he kind of gave up and went away. So, let's have a look in the suitcase. Uh, our suit looks almost brand new. Okay, so we're, we're okay at the moment. You've got to keep an eye on your suit because it gets dirty. And you don't want to be wearing a suit when it's dirty. Like Twin Peaks. Uh, kind, of, kind of, sort of. Ooh, there's a crowbar out here. I like that this, st this sticks around. I don't think we have space for it. No, that's why we didn't pick it up. I'm not a fool. Uh, but I guess all we can do is, is kind of head back out now. Look at this. More sweet tools. The door over here. Doesn't want us to go in here. I think, I think our progression is just to keep going back now. Right. Well, hopefully that chap's gone and he won't pose us any threat. Uh-oh. I spoke too soon. Now easy there, sunshine. Easy does it. Oh, this is not a good way to run. No, don't observe, York. Climb. And evade. Oh, he's going to throw an axe at us. Oh, why am I pushing this? York, run round it, you dolt. It's a good thing he's, uh... It's a good thing he's fairly relaxed. Whoa! Oh, thanks for destroying it for us, mate. And you got us the agent on her as well. Can't argue with that, really. This is, I will reiterate, an incredibly clunky mechanic. In case it's not immediately apparent. Everything about this is pretty poorly designed. <laughs> this bit is so daft, I love it, says Connor. I agree with you entirely. I, I love that he pushes these boxes. He finally works out he could have run round them. Get out of there, York. Get out. This is actually a really hard thing to do. Oh, I fell over. No! Oh my gosh, I got away. I thought he got me there. I got hit by the steam. I pushed the wrong button to evade. Go on, York. Come on, York. He's not really, uh... He's not really taking his, uh... Taking it all that seriously. I love that he always posts up as if he's about to throw the axe. But then that gets us out of the way. Oh, we rolled past the steam that time. Oh my gosh, I fell over. I'm not even sure why I fell over. Uh oh, here we go again. This is a good bit to start with. Oh, Get out of there, York! Get out of- oh, I realised you can see on the bottom screen a little bit easier. 
<laughs> the dramatic dive. Firstly, I love that he dives dramatically through the door. Secondly, I love that the axe bounces off where the door was. Like it hits in the middle of the door, but seems to just hit like a, an invisible clipping wall or something. I don't know. Anyway, that was uh, a dramatic start. And hello, we've got some, we've got some company here. We need to pull out our old hand meter, hand meter, handgun 10 millimeter custom. Anyone, uh, anyone else causing problems? Seems okay for now. 15 bucks for that dude. Oh, I should have shot him again. I forgot that the enemies take a while to dissolve. I can <laughs> Connor says, I convince people this is a good game and you start on this part. They, uh, that You're right. This, that was a, that's a bad thing to start on. But, uh, I don't know. I had it in my mind. But we made it away. You never convinced anyone, says Carl. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, there's certainly, certainly some shonky bits. Look at this tie physics, though. Look at these tie physics. Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Swing a tie. This left ride is a lot less exciting when there's uh, when there's nothing attacking you, which you know I suppose you should be grateful for, but also makes the whole thing just a tad dull. Whoa, that was quite a that was actually quite impressive. I'll 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 grant you that. Oh, he's got us by the throat. Oh, oh my goodness. Why? That's not a button they normally press. Oh, B. This is tough. Strafe right? Oh, oh my gosh. I died. That's it. This game over. Right, okay, that's it. Thanks for coming by. It's all over. Suit definitely needs uh, suit definitely needs pressing now, says Carl. Look at the state of it. Yeah, we've made a real mess. Man, quick time event, multiple quick time events with single single fail states. What video games are all about, right? I do like the way he comes down there, though. That's a good moment. I'm not quite sure how he manages that. Is the killer immune to bullets? Um, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know why we don't try that, but. Now, I don't know if they do the same buttons every time, so we have to be careful. I think they do, but I'm not entirely sure. So, it was strafe right was the next one. Which, strafe right... <laughs> That's so casual. That's the most... <laughs> oh my gosh. This game's alright. He's like... He just casually steps to the side and shoots the... Shoots the lift to send him back upstairs. You get torn piece of red raincoat. Huh? As if... All of a sudden we've realised perhaps the... That the red raincoat is somehow a clue... To the... To this mystery. Well, time to profile I guess. Ding! Profiling start. Oh, hello. Uh, someone's tied up. She's it sounds like she's having a good time though. Hey. She's just lying down in her lingerie. Oh, that's all very nice. She's uh, maybe a little bit drugged up or something. I don't know. What? Oh, there's a man in the red coat. The red coat. The raincoat. Oh, but he's taken the raincoat off and he's got a thing on his back. And now the woman in the lingerie is running away. Well, a woman in lingerie is running away. Oh no, and now he's he's biting her tongue off. And there's the... Now he's cutting into her. Oh god, this is gruesome. And now she's crying. She's left to bleed out. Man. Really, we didn't learn anything there at all. We All of those things are things we already knew. We need, Zach. But apparently... Let's go back and apparently that's all the information we need. We didn't... I don't think we actually gained any information, but apparently we did it. So, 
back to Emily and George, I guess. Let's see what they have to say about all this nonsense. At least it stopped raining. Is that like a weird interstitial cutscene of him leaving? Any of these things before? No, not that I know of. <laughs> Some hair, a raincoat. That raincoat is a little odd. Odd? In a town where it rains so much? Well, the people here rarely go out in the rain. I moved here during high school, and I never really understood why. Can you shed some light on this, George? Because it's, it's a murderer. No. Oh. Well, there's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale, to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. A vicious killer in a bright red raincoat. Yeah, that was it. Just a foolish piece of superstition. A rubbish story someone made up. <laughs> How many people still believe it? But I guess it's a traditional place. Most of the shops still close up when it rains. School's out too. They just close the whole town down when it out. rains. Not many people ever wear raincoats. What if you get caught out in the rain? Killer has leapt out from his picture book. Oh, by the way, would you two kindly show me your backs? Yeah. Backs? Oh yeah. Wow 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 wow. Upside down piece mark in that photo we found. Ah, he's onto something. He's our killer. And what makes you so sure about that? Zack and I saw him kill Anna in the lumber mill. He oh, that's weird. <laughs> Just directly yeah. mentioning Zack straight up oh, front. One thing. Please don't ask me about Zack. That's a private matter. It's uh what I call my penis. Anyway, by showing me your backs, we can clear up most of my concerns about you. Oh, so I really Isn't that for the best? Really like backs. You want to remove yourselves from the suspect list. It will make nice muscular toned backs. Your methods are rude, insulting and out of the question. And Emily is a female officer, forcing her to show you her back. I mean, George George is not entirely wrong about that. It's a bit rude, but you are out of line. Mm-hmm. Hmm. George, it's okay. Let's just show him and get it over with. Emily, are you crazy? Look, we flash our backs and he'll start trusting us. I mean, there's a life lesson there. Flash what? your back and people will trust you. Agent York. <laughs> Lighting up a cigarette is a little bit weird. I'll give you that. Ooh, I'm ready for this one, Emily. Okay, yep, yeah, that you're good you're good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, solid back, good shoulders. Yep. Are you satisfied now? Oh yes. Yes. My apologies. <sighs> now you, George. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can't refuse it now, can I? But don't expect to get your way all the time. Agent Morgan. Look, it was a prank some people played. They put sun cream on me in a weird position. I know it looks strange, but the skin will replace itself. It'll heal up. Huh? My God. What are these scars? Just like your Mr. Zack. Something private. I don't have to tell you about it. Bit of a uh, bit of a kink. Just like Zack. Connor, behave yourself. We can understand. It's graceful. Right, Zack. Anyway, this will make things a lot easier from now on. I'm okay, well, it seems like these guys are in the clear. Thank you for your cooperation. See ya! If He's the most suspicious. George, I arrived no, in town after I the so. murders started. But he certainly is the most irritating. Oi! You've studied the crime scene. You know what we have to do next, Zach. Oh, yeah. George. 
Can we arrange to have the town folk gather in one place? There are some things I want to address with the town folk. Very well. I'll arrange to have as many as possible gather in the community center tomorrow. Thank you, George. Here's our moment of, uh, let's just meet everyone who's left in town all at once. <laughs> Those goofballs. We clear the murder site. 250 buccaronis. $2,200 in unpaid salary. Raking it in. Absolutely raking it in. We'll save, of course. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. I'm exhausted. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late. Okay? Don't be late. I'll be there. Do not the be late. Center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Oh, the hey, south guys. side. Well then, see you tomorrow. Great. York looking very solemn there. Connor says, sounds like streets of rage to me. Better get something to eat soon, Zach. Are we hungry? I think there's a way to look that up. Brum. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, it's there. Oh, we are quite hungry. We can probably, we can, we, I think we've got quite a lot of food. We can probably, uh, grab a snack out of here, right? Have some crackers. Some buttery tasting crackers. They don't give you very much. We got anything else? Oh, a turkey sandwich. Satisfies a large amount of your hunger. Oh, look at that. You ate a lot of this delicious turkey sandwich. I think that's the one we found in the lumber mill. Well, seemed to do the job. Now we also need to sleep. So I guess we should get back towards the house. So here, I guess you can go back into the lumber mill and repeat the combat encounter. Also, it looks like there's, um, looks like there's a card over here. Let's see if we can grab that. Do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, it's inside the fencing. Oh, I don't know how you... I don't actually know how you get inside the fencing. I don't know if you can just drive through it in a car, maybe? Let's grab this one. Doesn't matter which one we take. I like that they've brought three police cars down here. Like, who else came down while we were waiting around? I'm going to try and drive in here and see if this works. I don't think it does. No, okay. Worth a try. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. So we're looking for a way into this left one. If that's even possible. I love that they've just basically made like a little mini driving puzzle. Speaking of 80s movies, as we were. To mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83. Directed by Douglas McCann. Right. It was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with hmm. the mouth crammed full of teeth. I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. I wonder how the sequel turned out. You know the monster in that uh, movie is the sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. Ah, oh, Tremors, of course. A classic. Directed by Ron Underwood. Now that was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. That Kevin Bacon's masterpiece. There's clearly a way out, but I don't see a way in. I guess maybe you have to come from up on top or something? I don't know. This thing's a nightmare. I don't even really want the card that much. I might just leave it there. I'm not going to go hunting it down. Let's see if we can just get out of here. We need to get home. It's already 2117. I'm just going to, just very quickly, I want to change one of my settings here, so I'll just pop that up for a sec. And just switch this over. There we go. OK, 
Okay. Right. Ramp in. There is... It, I couldn't see a ramp in. I could see the ramp out. But it doesn't seem to be a, a good way in either. Uh, right, we want to go... Jeez, I don't even know how we get out of this car park. There is somewhere... Oh, it's over here. I see it. God, this place is a nightmare. I guess there was a lot of parking for when... There must have been lots and lots of people coming in to work in at the lumber mill. They already kind of established that this town is uh, pretty busy uh, when it was at its height. Alright. There's a phone just here. Get our save on if we want. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? Yeah, I want to we check out the community center by 1500 today. Just think of talking in front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? It's It's going to get fun. Oh, it's going to get fun, all right. Yeah, once we start to meet all the uh, inhabitants of the town, that's when things are really going to kick off. There's some, uh, some definitely some colourful characters in here, and, and that's, you know, that's going off York as a basis, so you can only imagine. There's a race here. We could do a race. I'm not really too interested in doing the race here. The races are a bit dumb. I don't know. They're fine. Um, we'll do some of the side activities, I think. But uh, really, we're here to see the story. And a lot of the side activities don't have like a ton of story to them. Like They might get you a couple of bonuses or something, but... Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward, and I say... Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. Sure. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. I guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007. But it had no sequels. A real shame. These are particularly fascinating to me because I don't know anything about movies in general, let alone a lot of these obscure movies that York talks about. Remo's master Chun ran across water, remember? That's quite impressive. Man, that was a good character. Some of the side yeah, some of the side cases are great, as Connor says. Some really good stuff in here. Huh? Zach, we'll finish our chat later. Let's take a walk around here. Where's the flower? Oh, it's here. There we go. Ah, oh, a dandelion. There's something very mesmerizing about it. I wonder what it's called. I'll take one with me and ask someone later. Flower with no name. The mystery flower. Pop it in your pocket, York. Might come in handy. What an eccentric. Alright, well, let's carry on with our conversation. He should just start it right back up once we get going. We'll hear what he has to say about all these obscure Japanese directors. Actually, I just want to have a quick quick nip at the map and see where we need to be going. Right. If we swing... We swing a left here and then we'll go up this road. And that should bring us... Oh, hang on. Where are we? This is, this is not where we're going. This is the... Uh, this is where the town hall is. So that's where we're going tomorrow. I think the the hotel is over here somewhere. Yeah. So really we can kind of just kind of doesn't matter how we get there, but we'll we want to be heading northeast. I guess we could go down Cope's Tunnel. I don't know if it lets you go down Cope's Tunnel or not because there are side activities down there. But maybe we'll try it. I don't know if it has an issue with you going get down Cope's Tunnel. Uh, before you've triggered those activities. We might have a bit of time when we wake up to do some of the side stuff. Have I got the house DLC activated? No, I, di I didn't put any of the... I don't think so, anyway. I don't think I put any of the specific DLCs on. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward and I say Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. I guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? 
the ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Yeah. A martial art with no weapons? Never heard of that before. It's weird, I feel like sometimes he'll start up the conversation where he left it off, but here he's like, he's started it from the beginning again. But oh well. We, we, we literally missed the last line. So, uh, ended up hearing the whole thing twice, but that's fine. Right, so now we want to swing into town. Uh, I think this will actually bring us roughly into town. So apparently if we have the, Connor says if you have the house DLC you can sleep in the town. I don't think that we do unless it's activated by default, but it might be. But I, I don't know, I, I, I'm okay with going to see Polly to be honest. She's, uh, she's a good laugh. It's not too far outside of town. We could always visit a bar, I wonder if the bars are open. Pretty late. Hmm. Also, I've come up into this coldy sack, and I'm not entirely sure I can get out this way. Let's uh, let's pull up the map again. Ah, oh, this map. If this map was just a little bit better, that would that would really be nice. But it's a uh, a functional nightmare. Okay, so we're just here. Oh wow! So we just swing a left here, and then and then we should be good to go. We could, we could possibly see if the Galaxy of Terror is open. We're going to be right next to it, so. We could, uh, we could drop in. Are we on the wrong side of the, uh... Ah, whatever. Let's get out of the car. Is there a way out of here? Is this like a weird Colby sack? Run around the side. There's people out. It's not like no one goes out when it's raining. It's closed. Why is it closed? It's the middle of the... Well, it's 9.30. I guess it's raining. Maybe it's because it's raining. I can't remember if like, just everywhere closes while it's raining. They do kind of imply that that's the case. Let's have a peek. See what we can see inside. This is my, one of my favourite features. It's just... Peering in through the windows of places. Yep. Nope. Definitely closed. Definitely no one in there. Oh well. Next time, we'll go to Galaxy of Terror. So how's everyone doing today? What have you been up to? We've got a little bit of downtime here, so... You, uh, you had a nice morning. Got any uh, plans on the go for this evening? Yeah, it's because it's raining, Connor says. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't like it, but it makes sense. Fits with the town's law. Wait, right, look at the map. I swear we were... Oh, I drove past it. I need to turn around and go up Vale Way. Alright, well, let's just run around the block, I guess. This is where the police station is. I, I, um, oh, the police station's just to our left there. I see it. There's another card here, but you have to drive around to get to it. Now, Joel Gray's daughter is, of course. That's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Jennifer yep, Gray. Uh, definitely knew that. One of my most favorite movies. You can just say favorite. You don't need to say most favorite. You're, come on. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy. Pan's Labyrinth. But you really do like oh, right. I've never movie. seen Pan's Labyrinth. It seems really interesting, though. It's got a very, uh, very good following. Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Heckerly. Now, that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn. Whoa. <laughs> Almost rolled the car again. We're, uh, we're a better driver now than we used to be. Forrest Whitaker were Oh, Nicholas Cage and Forrest Whitaker. The script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? I think this might be where we want to go. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this road and just assume that it's where we want to go. That's right. It was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. Memory. 
There's like a cone on the map. I don't know what the cone represents. I swear these icons are these icons new to the director's cut. Maybe we can catch up on a few. I should have let him finish talking. I am a film scrub, you're right. You're right, Kyle. Oh, I think you're talking about I think you're talking about Connor, but I am also a film scrub. Country ham will satisfy a moderate amount of your hunger. Don't I know it? Oh, Polly's here. Hi, Polly. Oh, hi. Rain at this time of night is a little scary, isn't it? Reminds me of back when I was still a child and I couldn't sleep. Rain at night is never a good thing, especially in a town like... Oh, that was, I think that's York. Rain at night is never a good thing, especially in a town like this. Oh my, I know it's getting pretty late, but you shouldn't say things like that. I'm a lady, you know. Sorry, Polly. Oh, Mr. Morgan, you are so silly. Do you enjoy making fun of me? Zack. She isn't doing this on purpose, is she? Got a nice info gathering bonus. What can we buy from her? Oh yes, yeah, some ten millimeter auto bullets. Good old Middle America. <laughs> um, anything that's going to satisfy a large. Oh, we get a standard fishing rod. I don't think we have a fishing rod. Maybe we should grab one. You acquired rod. We'll call it Rod Stewart. And we'll buy some bait as well, I guess, because we might as well. Connor says, <laughs> they're dubbing One Punch Man. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. That doesn't seem, that seems like a show where a lot of it, like a lot of it comes from the over-the-top dialogue, because it's such a sort of, not really a parody, but it's, you know, it's having fun with that stuff. And I feel like a lot of that comes over in the, the voice acting. The bit with the food. <laughs> Okay, he's talking about he's talking about Pan's Labyrinth. I don't know anything about Pan's Labyrinth, but uh, other than like the bit where the eyes in the hands and all that. Connor says, "Ken, have you ever thought about becoming a voice actor?" Um, not really. I would, I, I'd, I'd do it I, if someone wanted me to do some voice acting for something. I did actually. Uh, they, they, did, so they did that thing recently where you could uh, send in a thing to do like a bit part in a Mass Effect game. Basically, like you, it was like a you read off like four lines. And then sent it into them. And I did think about doing that, but then I've just been busy and I didn't really get around to it. Um, but it was more like, hey, you know, you get to, you get a free, like, couple of days to come and look around one of the Bioware offices and see what's going on. I can't remember which one our room is. It's not this one, because it's got a do not knock. Saitama with an English voice. Yeah, it would sound really weird. I think this is our bedroom. It is fantastic. Okay. Well then, uh, where's all our stuff? What happened to like the? What happened to the? <laughs> Maybe this isn't our bedroom. I thought it was, but none of our stuff's in here. I can definitely get some sleep here, Zach. Well, I, I suppose it's our bed then. <sighs> um, what's the time? Nine forty-five. So nine hours takes us through to 6.45, which is, I guess that's when York would wake up. This isn't my room. Okay. Well, we're going to sleep in here anyway. There's a... There's a topless lady on the wall, which is nice. I can get behind that. Uh, Polly comes in. She's like, Agent York, why were you sleeping in... Why were you sleeping in some other person's room? Oh, our room's the one with the little things on it. That makes sense. <sighs> I don't really want to sleep again, though. Suitcase. It's looking a bit dirty. Right, well... As it's a special occasion, let's put the old crimson suit on. And, uh... We'll have this washed for $8. Fantastic. It'll take 24 hours to get cleaned. That's fine. We've got this lovely new crimson suit. 
Uh, as I said last time, there are a bunch of other suits you can get, but um, it feels like they're... Uh, they all kind of make the game easier, so I'm, I'm a little wary of using them, so... For now, we'll, we'll steer clear. Uh, you can take 20 lollipops. I could have just kept taking lollipops. Um, smoking the cigarettes is useful. You can do the old Metal Gear thing of smoking a cigarette to make time go by. We've got three milk and a couple of black coffee. Oh, we might want a coffee this morning. Uh, we don't really need to drop anything off here, I don't think. We're, we're doing okay. So we'll just we'll we'll leave we'll leave all this as is. How are we looking? Uh, should we have like a, a morning shave? I suppose we should, as it's the the day of the the chat. Have a nice clean shave. <laughs> Connor says, "I hate this suit. Some of them are horrendous." Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I like it because it's different, but it's not a suit I would recommend anyone wear. Uh, really, I think the classic suit is probably the best of his standard ones. There are some good ones you can buy though So maybe when we go down to the milk barn uh, We'll grab ourselves a nice snazzy suit uh, For the occasion in fact, maybe we could do that this morning. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how we go We've got plenty of time. I don't know if we can have breakfast with Polly um, I think that only happens when you do specific things But we can we could definitely get a coffee Can't can't miss your morning coffee. Mm mm mm. Good old coffee. You will have a lot of fun today. Lucky place theme park. There's no theme park in this town, though. All that good luck is just slipping away. <laughs> but I think I'll I love the concept. He's like, oh, I was gonna. I would have gone to a theme park. That's that's the lucky place. Uh, but there isn't one around. Let's have a second coffee. Let's get jacked up. We've got to get our confidence up to talk to the... Do not act without thinking first. Lucky number three. Okay. So, my lucky number is three today. The first case I worked after joining the FBI had three victims. You had hot chocolate this morning, Connor. What is that? Right, we're having a third coffee because it's lucky number three. He's going to be urinating all afternoon. But that's fine. Unpredictability lies ahead today. Lucky place train station. I don't even know if this town has a train station. A wonderful thing. Cases may come flooding in like passengers at rush hour. Eh, yeah, tying it into the train. That's smart. I like that. I like that there's no way to cancel out of that. You just have to ponder long enough. Get a few dollars for fortune telling. How are we doing on food? Do we need to eat something? Yeah, we really do. Uh, maybe we can go grab lunch in town. I think you get more out of having food in town than you do doing it elsewhere. Whoa! See ya, Polly! Catch you on the flip side! Okay, so we've got, we've got all morning. We've got until, uh, was it 1500, I believe? So 3 p.m.? We can explore the town, meet a couple of the folk ahead of ahead of time, see what's going on. Any cars around? Wait, where are the cars? No. Oh, they're over here. Okay. I was worried for a second there. We need to buy our own car. I, I'm interested because I did I, I did click on one of the things that gives us a car in the main menu, but I don't know when that activates, whether you have to go pick up the car from somewhere specific, or whether you just have to wait until a certain time before that activates, or whether when you buy a car it'll automatically transform into that, or whether now I've unlocked it I have to then purchase the car. Because you can buy cars, which is a little bizarre. Can you get your car back yet? Oh right, no, maybe, maybe it's when they give us our car back. I don't know when they do that. Uh, they do at some, I think as, at some point maybe in a cutscene. Oh, this is the thing we just heard. We... Daughters, of course. That's right, Jennifer. The annoying thing about this is we have to kind of let it play out because uh, otherwise we'll just keep She's repeating it. Most Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Right, where should we go in town? By John Hughes. Huh, that won't 
was so 80s. Uh, I don't know what will be open. We'll, we'll swing in. But you really do like those cheerful movies. We can see if um, love those teenage movies back. See if like any of the food shops are open yet. They might not be. It is not even 7 a.m. So maybe they won't actually be open yet. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Hecker. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates. Not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. Okay, have a look at the map, see what we've got going on around here. What is this? Brian's house. Why does Brian's house look like, a, look like a little Christmas tree? We've got someone over here. Suspect is at Nick's house. I wonder if that's Nick. Book Mountain Bank. Greenvale Sheriff's Department. Well, we know we want to be there eventually. There's a pink house here, but it doesn't say what that is. Uh, I'm not sure which way. I think this way leads away. This is where like those train tracks are. There's some stuff that happens over there later. Uh, this is where we're going to want to go eventually. But uh, I want to go over here. I think the milk barn's down this way somewhere. Um, if I remember correctly, which I may well not do. There's the junkyard. Or oh, maybe we should go by the junkyard. Milk barn is here. So if we head down January way, we'd get to the milk barn. Um, okay, so we can just swing it right here. And that should get us there. Honestly, it's good getting the car because using the DLC one is so fast. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Uh, the thing is, though, I feel like, I feel like although the cars are are faster like this car is almost too fast as is it's it's not fast enough sometimes but then when you actually want to do anything it's really fast but I think some of the other ones are less prone to tipping over all the time so maybe that's a good thing just crunch our way over power bridge I think this is just down here that we want to go yeah, I see a petrol station. I don't know if that's the milk barn or if that's the place, uh, the other petrol station beforehand. But maybe we'll swing by there anyway. So is this the gas station? This isn't the milk barn, or is it? Better get something to eat soon, Zach. No, this is just the this is just the petrol station. It's just closed. I don't know if it tells you what time they open. So we have to be there between three and five, basically, is what's worth remembering. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need oh, to there's a card. Community center by fifteen hundred today. Lovely. Just think of talking in front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? It's going to get fun. Let's uh, let's take a look at Gina's sponge. Oh yeah, yeah. Show me that sponge, Gina. They look open, but we might need to come by car for them to notice us. Oh, I wonder if they've opened now that it's seven o'clock. Did we just miss the uh, just miss the opening time? Also, is there a dog panting? Because it sounds like there's a dog panting. It definitely says it's closed. I don't trust them. Let's just keep going onwards. We'll go check out the milk barn. We might have to smoke a cigarette or something to pass the time. There's the milk barn. You can see just up ahead on our map, the, indicated by the, the ginormous milk jug, of course. See these great places over here on the left, some real bangers. Okay, Zach. I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next. And finally, I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie. But I've put a lot of thought into this. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975. Directed by Steven Spielberg himself, the grandfather of Penn. See what he's. Let's find out what this movie is that he wants to see. Massachusetts. Steven Spielberg's the grandfather of, from the beach for years. of Panic movies. I think we know what it is. Hand might come floating up. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. It's Jaws. The underwater camera. Connor's got it. Of course, it's Jaws. I'd never been that scared by a movie before. 
But the best thing I wouldn't watch. I've not seen Jaws. I've seen bits of Jaws. I can. Well, I could watch. To be honest, I could watch Jaws. I'm already like concerned about sharks in the sea. So Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I guess I was still just a child back then. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. Taste the terror! That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. The second back. I was gonna say, is it Jaws 2? I don't know if that's a Spielberg Robert joint, though. Who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but... Is Jaws 2, like, does one of them have, like, the son of so Jaws in? Jaws appears. It's right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws Part 19. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies. It was still a great joke. I mean, so far. The years from 1985 would be... 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. Yep, we'll be there pretty soon. By then, Zach. What will life be like by 2015, Zach? If only we knew. Let's save up. I'm sa as I said last time, I'm just going to keep saving any time we get a chance to. Cost us a dollar. But you get so much for turning in the first time anyway. Um... There's a suspect over here. Can we talk to them? Just sitting in her car. Nothing here of any interest to me. I think she's the lady from the milk barn. I like it. She's just, she's like, oh, I got to work early. I can't, I can't really get out and open the shop up. We're not, you know, we're not allowed to open up this early. Um, gosh, I, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just sit in my car and, and just hang out. Let's have a smoke. We'll go till nine o'clock. Look at that deer up in the top left, just hanging out. Good old two hour smoke. Oh, she's gone. And the milk barn's open. Fantastic. Connor says, it gets really stupid. In Jaws 4, the shark follows Brody's family to Hawaii. That does sound pretty stupid, I'm not going to lie. I don't know, I'm into that. You've got to take it somewhere weird, I suppose. At some point. And welcome to the milk barn. Lovely guitar up on the wall. Good motifs. It's like a, the guitar that's so big that it gets, just clips up through the ceiling. Got some agent on it for us. Got our boy over here. Hanging out, hanging and banging. A Grekoch... Grekoch card? I guess that's the name of his guitar. Our boy here. I think it's Keith. Is it Keith? Let's talk to some of these jabronis. No relation to the case, I'd figure. I don't know why you'd think that. Let's hear what this person has to say. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Lily Ingram. My husband owns the convenience store. And we have two sons. Here's Lily Ingram, Keith's wife. He runs a convenience store and they have two sons. Just a regular wife in a regular family. Oh god, what's her face doing? That our sons were the first witnesses to the crime scene. Oh! Calm, considering their involvement in such a big murder case. That's... They're her <laughs> children. So? I'm glad to hear that. She's very chirpy about it. I looked all bleak and gloomy. I think it would hurt our business. Uh, Agent Morgan. I'm on a lot of antidepressants right now. Uh, Lily, please don't call me that. You call me York if you can. People have been calling me York for a long time. You're a silly one. No, not at all. I'm just a regular. She's really hopped up on her face on something. <laughs> so what were you about to say, Lily? Giving her the side about eye. About my scar? Um, I'm sorry. I seem to have forgotten. It's because you said something silly. I see. All these opiates, they kind of, they kind of ruin my uh, memory. Important. Just let me know. I will. I'll probably be making use of your store during my stay here. So I'll see you from time to time. Mostly to poop. I'll see you soon then. Kyle cashing them checks. Michael Caine making the big bunny in Jaws 4. Um, so she's now got a little icon on her, which I think means we can buy from her. They aren't suspects. Let's go, Zach. 
Why? It's weird that they're just like, hey, here are some other people who, who you just never talk to. Let's talk to, uh, let's talk to your big boy, the big dog. We have to, can we, can we not do it from this side? So, you're the talk of the town. Tapping his foot. Keith Ingram, convenience store owner. Look at that, look at those chops. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me. I love that he's tapping his foot, but there's no music playing. Name's Keith. A pleasure meeting you, York. He's also off his face. Just staring into the middle distance. So, Keith, I have a couple of questions about the incident. Huh? Sure, fire away, man. Keith, look at me. Once, just look at my eyes. Yeah, of course, man. Oh, please don't do that anymore. She was such a nice girl. I mean, what kind of sicko would do that to her? Well, I'm here to catch that sicko. Listen, even the smallest piece of information might be useful to me. If there's anything you noticed or want to let me know, contact me. Okay, will do, bro. You got my cooperation, FBI. Another thing. I'll be frequenting your store during my stay here. So I'll see you around. <laughs> sure thing, bro. Yeah, whatever, what cop. Need, so drop in any time. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> he goes back to, like, just clutching his head in despair. Right, Lily. Keith only tends to remember the things he likes himself. There's some stuff he'll probably forget to offer you. Why don't... Then why don't you look after the store? I couldn't do that. He owns the place. It wouldn't do him any good to rely on me all the time, either. You shouldn't destroy anything... Do anything to destroy the confidence of those you love. She says, standing about two inches away from him. You're a very understanding woman. Anyway, Keith works better when he's confident. When he works well, that lightens the load on me. I see. It's a clever strategy. I wouldn't have the patience to carry out that strategy. Now, stop being silly. Well, did you want to buy something? I can show what we've got. You always look like a busybody. Is the job working you Keith's just going ham over there. It's not so bad, hon. I've got look at him. To it now, really. You seem to be taking it easy. He can't get the music out of his head. To take a laid back approach. Huh. Oh yeah. Can be a huh. recipe for oh yeah. Disaster. Come on. Do the big dance. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 I'm favor. dancing. Such I'm Keith. I'm Nothing the big dog. Major. I'm the it's bond. I'm the man. I'm the big dog. Huh. Oh yeah. Come on. It's Keith, baby. It's Keith, baby. I used to ask my father to help us out, but well, he's not that young anymore. Of course, I'll give you something in return. If you tidy the place up, I'll give you this. What's that? A bronze card. It's a discount card for the milk Oh, bond. a discount card you for the milk bar. Things cheaper with this. I think it'll help you lower your investigation expenses. So you're saying that helping you out will ultimately help the investigation. Zach, what do you think? I don't mind if you want to help her. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you, hun. The storage room is this way. Part time job one. Lily is giving you part time work tidying up the milk barn storeroom by pushing the boxes around. The milk barn is only open when the weather is nice. Lunch break included. I wonder if we get lunch if we if we work there. Okay, move the boxes in the storage room onto the pattern section of the floor. So here's a good old uh, box pushing puzzle. Right, this one shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too difficult. They kind of show you off the bat where you're going. So uh, I don't remember how. I don't remember if there's a way to see from above, or maybe you have to go back to the start to do that. But we should be okay. York, stop pushing it. You did enough. Um, then push this up here. Bruh. He has to fund his own investigation with warehouse jobs. Uh, not so much that. It's just that you know, he's got to get. Uh, he's got to get this discount card. You know. We buy. Then we can buy some fancy, expensive stuff. I mean, York is working here, but he's also. He's a helpful guy. You know, he likes to help out. It's not so much about the money, it's about helping out the local people, building a good rapport with the townsfolk. 
And uh, getting a nice bronze card for discounts along the way. Mm. Pays to be helpful. Oh, the music's back. Finally. Now Keith's not going to look quite so weird tapping his foot every 20 seconds. Oh, does he do a full square if I let go of A? I couldn't remember. Yep, nice and clipping through there. Good job, good job video game. You've nailed that one. He does. So normally he doesn't do that, but I guess for these, these particular puzzles he does. I've done it. Tell you what, it better it better not be that it's not working because it went slightly too far because that is my god. I think you're right, Connor. I think it's messed it up. Good god. What a what a high quality video game. <laughs> Love it. Yep, 10 out of 10, Kyle. Absolutely. I can't believe more pe people don't play this video game. See, this is why I, this is why you want to watch someone else play the video game. Go through these troubles. So you don't have to. I guess I should do this one first, because if it tits up... Okay. Right, I think we've got it this time. The music stopped again, which is a little depressing. But never mind. That tip on uh, letting go of A is, uh, was good though, Connor. That's helped me out a little bit. Oh, music's back. We're back in business. Hurrah! 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 So what have you fine people got planned for the rest of the day? Thank you, hon. You've been a delicious cookie. You're a real That's hero. what I want. A hero. You just can't leave those who need help alone. See, can you? York, he's a real hero. You know, hon. You're that kind of guy. He's and that kind of guy. Your reward, hon. You've earned it. Bingo, a bronze card. We'll give you a discount from your next purchase. Thank you, Lily. Fantastic. You be careful not to get carried away and overspend, Zach. Agent York, you're a good person. My father doesn't seem to appreciate you yet. Who's your father? And I'm sure Keith is her father the um Come by any the lumber mill the uh, the lumber guy who looks after stuff. Never winter while thinking about destiny. <laughs> says Connor. Uh, says Kyle rather. Just thinking about destiny. I mean that's all you really want to do. You don't want to actually play destiny. Just think about it. You're right. We we probably should eat something. Um. Items. Eat a can of pickles. Some crackers. We'll have pickles and crackers. We stuffed our face. But I, I really, I want to kind of go and get an actual meal. I don't want to, or I want to buy something that's going to give us a bit more oomph. Hey, bro. Hey, FBI. Want to browse with the merchandise, man? We got enough rocking stuff here, just like there's a shop in the city. I'm sure you'll find what you want. Check it out. I heard you have... E oh, that's, that's your... I heard you have everything here. Is that true? Of course. Oh, yeah. But I tend to forget what we got. I always get in trouble because my list isn't all that it's supposed to be. And man, if for any reason you don't like my list, I'm cool, I'm cool. You always ask Lily. Her list is always perfect. So you want to buy something? Yeah, he is the granddad at the start. Hold on. A lovely spiritual map of Greenvale, you know, just the normal stuff. You got any good food? No, he hasn't got any good food. But he does have this spiritual map of Greenvale, which is nice. Uh, let's uh, let's go see what... Uh, thanks a lot, bro. Oh, man, we can get some cocoa gum. Sounds pretty good. Let's see what Lily's got to offer. 
Hiya, hon. Right, she's just uh, she's just talking about the twins. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Hi there. Hi there. Okay, so she's got a metal bar, a sickle. She doesn't have the map though. Onions. Should we buy an onion or an egg? Holland, uh, just a can of hollandaise sauce. Delicious. Love a can of hollandaise sauce. Smoked salmon and country ham. Oh, we go. An unbelievable, delicious turkey sandwich. We got a turkey sandwich. It worked out pretty well for us last time. You acquired turkey sandwich. We'll have that for a delicious snack. Oh, I can't carry any more turkey sandwiches. I'll have to eat this one and then come back. Connor says, it is worth buying the maps into the long run. Uh, I do want to buy the maps. You, the maps let you get the uh, the guns, the infinite guns. So we'll, we'll definitely grab those. Um, let's eat our turkey sandwich. Oh, look at that. We ate a lot. And let's grab another turkey sandwich for the road. Lily. That turkey sandwich was delicious. Get me another. Where is it? Fantastic. But it should be, you're right Connor, it should absolutely be delicious for $90 for a turkey sandwich. Keith Solo Live. Man, where, where can we see Keith Solo Live? Hey bro. Hey bro, you wanna buy something, cop? Alright, get ready. For a spooky story. Hey man, the spot on the map is called Cope's Tunnel. We did drive through there earlier. This is in town where like spooky stuff happens. I'll tell you a story, okay, man? But uh, don't go spreading it around. The spirits, they don't like publicity. That's what I know about spirits. Oh, it's gone dark. Back when the ah! Lumber Kingdom, you know, the rockin' 80s. That tunnel was the main connection from the lumber yard to this town. Every day, huge trailers would like come in and out. Lots of traffic, dude. Of course, some people were like all up in arms. Save our nature, stop pollution, you know. Big business was pushing in here from all over the US of A. Everyone was bickering over the forest. So some of the town people got even more worked up, you know. They started a protest inside the tunnel itself. <gasps> Not inside the tunnel. Was the start of all the bad times. Bad times. Oh yeah, man. Rough stuff and Keith, hell are you reading this off your time. iPad? The conservationists and the lumber workers faced off with each other. Is that what that light is the down there? Was back and down. <laughs> He's just got this written down. Worse. Amid all this chaos, there was a man and a woman who got engaged. Problem was that the man was a lumberjack and the woman, <gasps> she was Oh no. It's the real Romeo and Juliet. But then one morning, they had a lover's quarrel. People think that her love of nature clashed with his I mean, that, that's quite logical. You never know what they really were fighting about that morning. The man shouted. He called her an idiot. And then he stormed out and went to work. If only he had known, that would be the last word he would ever say to her. Oh my god. When he finished his work for the day, he got in his car and drove home. When he got to the tunnel... He saw lantern lights glowing faintly. Those fools, not again. He just thought they were protesting in the tunnel again. And to scare them a little, he decided to speed up. Oh no, man. He probably thought they'd all scatter so he wouldn't hit them. But the lights didn't move. In fact, one came toward him. Oh no, dude. A second later, there was a thud. And the lantern flew up into the air. Slammed on his brakes too late, of course. Like, way too late. Man, totally freaked. Climbed out to see what had happened. I don't need to tell you who he hit, do I? What's more, in her mangled hand, there was a letter to the head of the lumber mill. A peaceful settlement offer. The woman had oh, no dude. Other relatives other than the man. And the lumber mill took no responsibility for the accident. It was going out of business anyways. What happened to the man then? No one saw him again. Some say he killed himself or simply Whoa. just vanished. 
You know, he might still be in the tunnel, weeping over his lost love. No, he's not. I drove through there earlier. There was no one in there. Say there's a ghost of a young man that haunts the tunnel. I told you it was called Cope's Tunnel, right? Well, check this out. Some people call it Corpse Tunnel now. Whoa, dude, that's you totally grody. Mr. FBI, if you go down there by yourself. <laughs> Thanks for the story, Keith. We get our Cope's Tunnel is marked on a suspicious map. Merged, purchased from Keith at the Milk Barn. This is a map of the town, but he's put a big X on Cope's Tunnel or something. Go to the marked location and clear the Other World challenge there. And I think that gets you like the infinite machine gun, maybe for the first one, or the infinite shotgun. But we will head down there and, and do that. Um... I guess we could do that now. Um, depends what what time is it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see when we leave this place. <laughs> Kyle says, "Man, I'm fucking spooked." <laughs> I don't blame you. That is a, that is a scary story right there. The, he had the the lighting, the uplighting for effect. I think he maybe overdid the uplighting a bit. Also, he turned off all the uh, all the lights in his uh, general store just for the purpose of telling a spooky story. Also, I love. That they've got a milk barn van. That's pretty cool. Uh, so nine, oh nine till one, you can get lunch. I guess at the. Um, I guess that's with Thomas. Should we go and do that? I know we've already had lunch, but uh, maybe we should go grab something at the police station. Eat with the. Uh, eat with the detectives. That's always a good time. Um, we'll swing by, I'll tell you what, we'll swing by the, the petrol station, we'll see if that's open. Just quickly. Uh, is the orange thing on our map, is that our actual objective? Or is that something else? Oh, that's where the, uh, the Cope's Tunnel thing is, okay. So we want to head back into town, so we'll, we'll head back into town, kind of as normal, and... You can buy buy that later. Oh, you can buy the milk barn van. I didn't realize you could actually buy that. The the one I uh, I can't remember which one it is that uh, I normally get. It's just the, the like the last one in the list. It's pretty fast. There is a gun shop. Uh, I've never bought anything from the gun shop. I don't think you really need to. Like you have infinite ammo on some weapons, and you get a lot of versions with infinite ammo. Just a bit of whistling, nothing too weird. Also, I went to take that turn and realised it wasn't actually a turn I wanted to take. Still closed. Okay, well, not to worry. We'll uh, come back another time. Never went to service down again, says Kyle. Oh, dear. Well, you'll just have to sit here and enjoy some deadly premonition with us then. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, can we get this card? I want to see if I can get this card. We're down to 34% petrol, but the uh, the petrol station is not open, so there's not much we can do about that. Let's just drive across this land. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fine. Whoa! Also, I like that it moves your car to where it like where it decides it wants it to be. Jack the Raging Bull. There he is. Good old Jack. Uh, we'll encounter him, I'm sure. $200 for that. That was worth a detour. But we'll encounter Jack pretty soon. Um, in fact, I think he uh, worked at the gas station. But uh, we're going to be meeting everyone when we go to the town centre. So that'll fill up some of our time. Going past Bosch Street. There's another card up there. Uh, it's, tem it's so tempting to deviate for all of these cards. But, uh, I, you know, I don't want to spend too long on some of this stuff. I love that they just have little... When he runs out of things to say for this point in the game, he just has some little humming things. Bum, 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 ba dum Ya do 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 What a do 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 Okay, now where's the cop station? The cop shop. Let's have a look on the map. Is it just up ahead? Yeah, here it is. Thomas McLean. Dinner with Thomas McLean. And uh, George has a side quest for us. 
So let's go see what George wants. We get ourselves some lunch, some of Thomas's delicious biscuit. Nothing like snacking on Thomas's biscuits. Man, I, I'm too indecisive with my turns. I'm like, oh, I won't take this turn. Oh, there's a sign here for beer. Beer, coldy, light, VB. All of all of your favourite beers. Heineken, he Heineken. Cascade, Brown, Bogue 5, Wine, Classic. All of the, all of your favourite beers, all on offer at what doesn't it actually appear to be an available location. Just like some kind of weird uh, sort of half pub thing. And we'll park up, you know, just as you do in front of the police station. We'll hop out. See, look, it just rectifies it for you, which I actually kind of appreciate that. They go, ah, we know where you wanted to park. Like, in somewhat of a sensible location. Save up. As always, every, lo every occasion. I wish they gave you multiple save slots. Um, let's have a look at the map. See if we can find out where everyone is. Oh, they're all in they're all in here. Look at that. They're all in the investigation room. Just barge in. Damn it. Hello everybody! Having a nice time? Oh Thomas is eating. Oh no, he's writing. I thought he was just eating. All right there, George. George. He's having a great time. Look at his face. Exercise keeps me healthy. I love to pound the iron bars. Started in high school. Now that's impressive. Remind me to get more exercise, Zach. But I can't do my full routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold. I know that feeling. Yesterday, Arnold. Look at him just jacking it. I love how his upper, like, it, that's, that's, in a way, that's really good technique. Like, his upper arm is not moving at all. He's just, this is all just working that bicep. Okay. He's not using it, not putting anything on the shoulder. Just all bicep all the time. Lost Arnold. Well, I don't know if you were here. when we, I think it was the first episode we found Arnold. Uh, just in one of the cupboards in the police station. Let's get him his groove back. I think we can just talk to him again. Hi, George. Agent Morgan, did you want something? Yes. I want to give you this dumbbell that says Arnold on it. Used for working out the muscles. George, I found Arnold. Really? <laughs> he almost fell off his chair. Hard-headed, but I got him to come back. I don't know how he kept that in his pocket. <laughs> Arnold. Well done, Agent Morgan. Wait, well, where's you had two? You had one. Why have you not got two now? Workout menu. Good to hear that. Here's a little something to show you my appreciation. What is it? Oh, he's got cards of Arnold oh, and Sylvester. So makes of course, sense. the other one's Sylvester. I don't owe you anything, and you don't owe me anything. No changes to how we work together. Just bear that in mind. <laughs> this doesn't change our professional relationship, York. Zach, he needs some friends who aren't so dumb. Oh, oh, get it? Dumb, uh, yeah, dumb. Friends who aren't so dumb, uh, uh, uh. Let's see what Emily has to say. Oh, she won't say anything. Uh, will she? They have crude chairs in here. I'd hate to have to sit through a long meeting in one of these. I want to talk to Emily. Hello. Oh, okay. Do I want lunch? Yes, please. Let's have lunch. So, what exactly do you want to talk to everyone about? This case goes deeper than you think. The town folk may have heard about the murder, but they... Nice little sandwich. It's a very dangerous situation, and I need to warn them properly. I hope most of them are decent enough to come. No problem there. Emily has made all the arrangements. I've told everyone to gather around between 1500 and 1700. Great. I love how everyone else has got like little mini pancakes and fancy lunch meat. Have a film I saw this New York's just got a sandwich. The town is under attack by aliens. 
And so the mayor calls all citizens to the It's Independence Day or something. However, seeing this, the aliens attack Mars attacks. Wipe them all out together. Is that relevant, Agent York? The way they kill is fantastic. They used a combination of balloons and beat cells for exploding heads. Those aliens start firing their death rays and heads start popping. It's black. <laughs> Agent York, some of us are trying to eat here. I know, Emily, I'm one Dramatic. of Dramatic! Well, anyway, your cooking is the best, Thomas. Thank you. <laughs> nope, no problem. Alright, just one question. Why do you guys get chocolate milk and waffles, and I get a sandwich, and a fourth coffee of the day? Something's, something's not quite right there. Well, they've, all, they've all moved on, now that we've had lunch. So I guess we should do the same. Um, shall we go? What's the time? Does it say the time on here? One o'clock. I wonder if that's accurate. See when we go outside. Into the white uh, emptiness of space. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing going on out there. That was a bit weird. Hmm. It is in fact one o'clock. That clock was accurate. Okay, well, we could have a little peek through the window. I don't know if we need, really need to do that. Let's find our car. It's got to be around here somewhere. Maybe we should grab a different car because uh, we were running a bit low on petrol. Oh. Alright, well, we were in one of these. I'm going to take one of the big ones. And uh, we'll head over to, to Cop's Tunnel. You know, we've got a couple of hours to burn. And then we've also got a couple of hours of overtime as well. So I think we should be good. Hopefully. Hopefully we don't just miss this appointment. Like, Agent York, where were you? Well, I was, you know, fighting demons in another realm. As you do. Take a little peek at the map -o. Um, it should be an orange icon, although I don't... Oh, there it is. It's over that way. So, if we go straight up here. And then... Yeah, and then swing... Left. So, up here, take the second left, and then turn right. And then we should be good. You can indicate in this game as well, which is a pretty cool little feature. So, where shall we go next? Good question, Agent York. Where shall we go next? There's the first left. We want to take this left here. This car kind of seems to have a better center of gravity, which is good. And then we want to swing a right, just up here. Just seems to turn a little bit nicer. I think it is a slower car, though. But that doesn't actually bother me too much. Because it handles way better. Follow train tracks. Well, you can kind of follow the train tracks. Uh, the second one you go to is more directly on the train tracks. It's out the other side of town. This one doesn't actually have like the train line going through it, but it is next to the train line. You can see the train line just alongside us. Okay, let's explore Cope's Tunnel. Hope you're ready for some nice lengthy combat sections. Everyone's favourite part. I don't know, actually, I, do, I am quite enjoying the combat, to be honest. Gives us a bit of action. All I want is easy action. Do, 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 do. That's the far famous paranormal place they talked about. Maybe I should give it a shot. I'll give this a shot. I have a feeling that like when you get to the end of one of the each of the rooms, there's an option that can accidentally kick you out. Because um, I think that I watched someone do this and they kind of got near the end and then... 
Alright, gotta get my uh, shooting back on now. Man, it's been... There we go. Doodling. Yes. Come on. I can't look onto it, she's too far away. Bullseye. There we go. They're all dropping stuff as well, which is nice. Can't take this. Okay, well, we'll pop it in our, in our toolbox. We're actually probably going to overload on stuff pretty quickly here. Can't take any 10 mil auto bullets either. And we're probably not going to need them too soon because we'll uh, we'll end up. I think we'll probably end up cleaning ourselves out anyway. Come on! I don't want to die. I'm just being really slack with my shooting. very uh, easily done. So I think that blue thing might take us out of here. Yes, yes. Great. Yeah, so the, the we shouldn't go anywhere. Let's look for somewhere else. I believe that takes you out of the area completely. Which is weird, right? Because they put that the other side of the... Why is there a... Oh, there's a steel pipe. Oh, I can't take any steel pipes anyway. Do we get some stabilizer? Which is lovely. Yes, yes. Great. Excellent. So it's weird because you start they start you on this side of the room. And you're like, oh, that must be the way out. But in fact, that just takes you out of the thing. Whereas you actually want to turn around and go back through the door. And like again, here... What actually you need to do is every time you do it, you go back through the door. I kind of want him to get a bit closer. Okay, fine. I didn't even hit this guy. Great. Yes. Great. Yes. Very good. Reload before we start shooting everyone else. Bullseye. Oh, excellent. Top shot. Alright, we're out. Of we can't take any more 10 mil auto bullets. So I could use the 10 mil auto. But I actually don't think it's a better gun. Like, it takes just as long to kill people unless you hit them in the head. And at that point, like, you can hit them in the head just as easily with the. Maybe more easily with the, uh, the handgun anyway. So we should fill up pretty quickly here. And there you go, you hear the door unlock, and when it unlocks, you get a little gift on the table over here. Specifically a first aid kit large. Fantastic. Ah. So, who's everyone's favourite character in this game so far? Out of the people we've met. Are you a Thomas fan? Are you into Emily? I want to know. Bullseye. I mean, a York's like obviously uh, an easy pick, but outside of York, Bullseye. I gotta say, I'm a, I am a big fan of Emily. I think she's she's great. She's got good logic to her. You know, she's willing to put up with some of Agent York's nonsense, but she also recognizes that it is nonsense. Get out of the way here. Great, great. Yes. Fantastic. We get a golf club? Can we keep a golf club in the toolbox? Okay, we can. Fantastic. What about a scythe? Or a pickaxe? Deal with this chap, I suppose. 
ice axe. Can't take the ice axe, but we can put it in the toolbox. I'm not sure how much we'll be able to actually fit in the toolbox. Can't take any more steel pipes. We can take a shovel, though. You can put quite a lot in your toolbox, it seems like. Got that. More... More auto bullets. Yeah. Any more dudes around? Uh, I guess there's stuff on the table. Maybe we're already done. Oh, a root beer. Fantastic. Crack a root beer. See what that does for us. Nice refreshing drink. Fends off sleep and recovers quite a lot of tiredness. Fantastic. Oh, you drank it down in one. Thirsty work all this shooting. Cowboy hats and handlebar tashes do it for me, so back scar guy. Yeah, George. George is a pretty cool dude. Um, what about Keith? Keith's a good guy. I know Connor seemed to be pretty into Keith. Uh, it's weird when he's jamming when there's no tunes. When he's got a tune going, it's, uh, it's a little bit more jamming. Also, I feel like we met people a little bit earlier than a lot of people will. I think this guy might have guns. Yeah, they do. Uh oh, maybe I shouldn't have stood next to the. I was, I was. My plan of standing next to the explosive barrels was solid until suddenly there were. Great. Until suddenly there were like people shooting at me. So you see, when you shoot them, you stagger them out of the attack animation. Amazing. Got to use those. Uh, Got to use this cover effectively when you're fighting all these people with guns. Come on, Amazing. Amazing. little faux jokers. What do we got here? We got a. Uh... Oh, some 12 gauge shotgun shells. We need to fill ourselves up on those. We need to get ourselves a shotgun, to be honest. You shouldn't keep this. You can't keep this anymore. I guess we can pop it in the toolbox. Uh, we can also go into our inventory and uh, first aid kit's small. It really does recover a very small amount, but that's fine. Get out of here. Ugh. Amazing. No one else around? Get some cover from that guy's shot. Great. Nice shot. Fantastic. We'll blow up this barrel. I'm not sure if it'll actually make a difference. Oh, we're too far away. Hopefully that woman on the left isn't going to shoot us. Oh, she is. It's alright, we got away. Come on then, take some of that. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. We'll fill up our inventory with shotgun shells. Mission knife. I'm not sure if, even sure if we have enough space in the toolbox for some of these. Apparently we do. I'm not sure when they give you the shotgun. I don't think we currently have it. No. Stabilizer in the toolbox. You really can put a lot of stuff in the toolbox. I seem to remember running out of toolbox space a lot quicker. Another flare which is quite handy. So you can keep going and uh, you'll get more stuff the further into the level you go, the deeper in you go. What's this over here? Oh, some agent on there. Bam! Straight through the door. And here we go, we made it to the end. That wasn't actually too bad. And we get 10mm shotgun. Oh, submachine gun, rather. Oh, we can't take it. Put it in the toolbox. 
I'll have to go get it out of the toolbox later. Oh. A can of tomato sauce will satisfy a small amount of your hunger. Has anyone just ever eaten just a can of tomato sauce? There we go, extra for side missions, boom. Apparently they use no time at all, so good to know. Let's head back into town. Uh, I guess we'll just head back and head to the meat and we'll have a little smoke. And that should get us... Uh, that was awkward. That was awkward turning around. Right, onwards and upwards. Zach, we can take a rest if you're tired. Oh, I had that root beer. I'm fine. You know, feeling good. Delicious root beer. Can't go wrong. Woo, woo, woo. I do love the vid games uh, number plate as well. That's really something. Oh, is it an appropriate number plate for a sheriff, I find? Also, isn't that the number plate of all their cars? I'm pretty sure that's not legal. It should be like Vid Games 1, Vid Games 2, and so on. Right. Now, what's the quickest way to get to the outdoor center? Uh, just swing a right. Okay, fantastic. Down Humpty Dumpty Avenue. Also, I like the idea that putting your siren on just makes you faster. Bum ba down bum, bum bum bum, bum ba da da bum. I wonder if there's somewhere we can uh. Have a little look around the grounds. Oh, there is. There's a phone at the back. All right, let's go save before we start this lengthy cutscene. Do 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 Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. Just think of talking in front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? They get fun. There we go. Right. Just drive around to the front and uh, have a little smoko smoko. Why is there like stuff coming off from the tires? Is that because it's been raining or something? That'd be an incredible attention to detail. The water was splashing up because it's been raining a bit. I wonder if going here would automatically make it go to the right time? Seems like maybe it will. Fantastic. Oh no, she's going to tell me it's, <laughs> it's not open. Zach, Emily arranged for people to come between oh, dear. And 1700. We can't do anything here right now. Let's come back at the right. I time. love that they animated a cutscene for that. They could have just had him, you know, do whatever, but like nope, nope, here's an actual cutscene. Okay. Right, well let's have a smoke. A little smoke and a biscuit. And bingo. The ominous bells. Yep, three, that's correct. Right, strap in, buckle up, and get ready. This is a big one.
high quality beef that will satisfy a large amount of my hunger. You're absolutely correct. Look, everyone's here. So many cowboy hats. Jack, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. Lovely I school so table. In the wind this time either. Time of death. Oh, that was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. That's weirdly ominous. Thank you all for coming today. Good sound system, George. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Here's my badge. Check it out. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by I really like their shitty sound system. On a ground. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Everyone take your shirts off right now. Incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask She's calmed down, it's alright, it's fine. So I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated. Great little map you've drawn there, York. Those of you with children, especially of honesty. Guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a By God. that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims. Uh oh. Miss Stiletto heals herself. Could it be? I mean, she's got the right kind of shoes. Carol McLean. Now, that's not who they described as Miss Stiletto heels, but she is wearing high heels. My sister? I have a sister? Excuse me. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh, here's old Harry Stewart. Everyone's favorite. Taking center stage as ever. York's very mesmerized by like Carol or someone. Just pondering her at a distance. Hmm, she does have some lovely high heels. Our sins we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. That doesn't rhyme, Thomas. Oh, not Thomas. What's it? I can't remember his name. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell. Ah, there we go. Mr. Stewart. There's your rhyme. Fog covering the town. That was incredibly ominous. You're really not lightening the suspicion on yourself there, Harry. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zach. Let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Bum, bum, ba -da -bum, -dum, bum, bum, ba -dum. Okay, so now... We get to talk to just about everyone. Oh, Harry Stewart's left a poop on the floor. Still no hint of a smile. There's no reason we should focus our efforts on George. But let's talk to him anyway. Agent Morgan, here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Don't let it go to waste. 
That is a good moustache. You're right. You're right, Kyle. Hey, Thomas. Looks somewhat nervous, though I sense an inner strength to him. He's serious and an excellent cook. Though whether that makes him an able deputy is another story. Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Breathe deep. Take your time. I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Uh, I do, actually. But why? Could you <gasps> show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. <laughs> Just let <laughs> peering around. If it's gonna help you any. It's a sexy lady. <sighs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? I mean, good to help out. I want to know what that tattoo was. You see that tattoo, Zach? A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. <laughs> love G. We've all been through the 80s. Don't I know it? Born in 1990. Definitely not been through the 80s. Oh! Harry! Performance. Mysterious. Very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Tell him to fuck off. I'm a capitalist. Mr. Francis York Moore. The purple fog appears with the rain. Soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Rain the source from which it rolled. Then and only then the case is solved. But But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may it be informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. Is he saying he's going to take his mask off? Tell that cop I don't talk to policemen. Francis York Moore. Pay close attention to the sound. Just ignores George entirely. And the premonitions. The Small they may be deadly premonitions. And helpful to your investigations. So says... Look at these stone-faced people standing behind as well. But don't worry. Me and Zach, we know what we're doing. No, oh, he's disappeared. No messing around. Ooh, a black coffee. Thanks very much. Don't mind if I do. Emily. We shouldn't stare at her for too long. Just a little bit. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. Ooh. Okay, so we come back to Emily when, when we're done asking questions. I don't think any of these... Any of these people here are actually worth talking to? No relation to the case. I don't know why he decides that these random people aren't of any use. But uh, all our suspects are kind of dotted around. And uh, we're going to go chat to them all. Anyone over here before we... Uh... Ooh, some Agent Honor. Ah, here's the woman I want to start with. Oh, Carol McLean. Ooh, some cigarettes. Fantastic. They'll come in handy. A diva and her own boss at her age? Quite impressive. Character-wise, a stark contrast to her brother Thomas. Oh, the old smoke with your back to them. The ideal way to start conversation. Anna was an airhead. Oh! What do you mean? 
Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic. Gain one and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner. And she'd always... That's quite fun. impressive. Many plates a day. Always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> oh god, that's terrifying. <laughs> Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. Oh, fuck you then. I'm just going to stroll down this long corridor very slowly and seductively away. She stormed out of that. Wow. Right, so let's see what these uh, jokers over here have to say. This guy with his head down in the corner. Good evening, Agent. Oh yes, Brian the Insomniac, the Gravekeeper. Good He's evening, a nice Mr. normal chap. Brian, the Gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. Mr. Brian. 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 Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie. Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Hmm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Is he an actual zombie? Anna, blonde hair, so bright. Yeah, this town's full of completely normal people. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zach. I'm not excited about the idea, but... Maybe we should at least check it out. I mean, mo I imagine most towns have to have a graveyard of some sort. Got to put your, uh, got to put your dead people somewhere. As morbid as that can feel. Got the cowboy crew over here. Hold Q himself. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. So Anna was killed, but why does that bring the FBI here? Old Quint Dunn, darts bar employee. I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you, but it means the death of a friend to me. I don't want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. I'm here to apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now. <laughs> Just take his statement at face value. You're going to capture the perpetrator yourself, Quint. How do you know my name? I memorized the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. You mean Becky? No, your we other significant other. FBI. We know and see everything. We, <laughs> jeez, that's kind of scary. I was a little harsh. Everything. We know everything. Okay. The all-seeing eye. Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. And that was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend. The, o the only I name. Him like a book, Zach. Cheeky. Oh, a bit of, bit of head games from York there. Gotta love the head games. Let's see who his friend is. His friend with the, uh, the little ponytail. And the dartboard and the spider. You're Lovely. York, right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the darts bar. Swear he's 65. You Quint's dad? I guess so. Old Richard Dunn? Dicky Dunn? How'd you like the town? Oh, it's great. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. The murder just yep. doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Uh, I guess you're right. So... 
How did you know Anna? Well, I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all, just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? Well, she's I went pretty off cute. School with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, oh, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love? Oh! Hey, 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 don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. I like that big uh, medallion he's got on his You're chest. Right, Showing off a little bit of the chest hair. Gossip won't for the ladies. The at hand. But he did pretty much confirm that he does like her a fair bit. Good to know. Stack that one up in the book. Hey! It's our friend Usher. Hi Usher. And Fiona's here. His age isn't immediately apparent, though he can't be that old. Looks like a trustworthy doctor. What's up, Usher? Agent York, you make any progress? Of course, plenty. But tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was the sole reason for living after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. That's what it sounds like. And I should kind of a shame. We should uh, we should go see uh, Anna's mum. And I'd appreciate it if you could too. Uh, but don't go too hard on her, okay? You know what I'm saying? Wow! 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 The freckles on her nose make her look like a schoolgirl. That's what he said last time. Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Don't do that hand gesture, Fiona. Come on. Fiona. Behave yourself. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. How does that hat stay on as well? He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo. But I don't I mean, by the standards of the town, Usher's pretty normal. In the autopsy room all day. But I do. I mean, it's his job. He's doing research to make <laughs> it's literally his job to be in the autopsy room all day. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. Oh, really? I did not know that. I will get him to buy me a coffee later. Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Nice. Oh, man, we should go check out Usher's house. Amazing, Zach. He must be loaded. That rap album did wonders for him. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all. Oh, he's doing the same thing as me. He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the value. Y'all talking about me over there? <gasps> Back to tapping his head. He just doesn't stop. He just is he indicating that he's constantly thinking. Oh, look at this old army boy over here. Our junkyard dog. So you're the FBI agent, are you? The general, owner of the scrapyard. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore. Not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happen in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> you kids today don't even know how to ask for something, right? Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. His voice is straight out of Metal Gear. He and I love it. He exudes raw power, Zack. He literally Despite exudes raw power. Issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. Calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? Ah, hey, he's not letting on. There's something weird going on with the general. Nothing happening down there. Who have we got over here? Ah, oh, we've got a couple, another couple over here. Let's see what they have to say. Is 
This is the uh, the lady that looked very sad during the presentation. York Morgan, and you are Olivia, Nick's wife. Is Olivia Cormac Nick's wife? Which leads me to believe this is Nick Cormac next to him, next to her. What kind of girl was she? Ah, uh, she runs the diner. She was a very hard okay. worker. A nice girl. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained. And came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come Getting wasted. Strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? I mean, that would kind of fit with his weird kind of a criminal. Criminal cult thing that was going on in the lumber mill. Getting drugged up and having a party time. Right, let's talk to what I presume must be Nick Cormac. Good old shot of his dirty crotch. I'm mm. US Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are the owner of the diner that Anna worked at? He That's showed right. his badge at the start to everyone. Nick Cormack, diner owner. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. Fine, okay. You sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. That took longer than if you said nope. Okay, so he's got nothing to say to us. Wow. Alright. Well, fair enough. Doesn't want to say anymore. Oh, here's our gun buddy. He's got no legs. They're invisible. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. Sometimes they refer to me as Drebin. Was Don't know why. You want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. I guess out in, in the wild, maybe they need guns a lot because of wild animals or something? I hope so. Slow zoom on the toolbox. Oh, we can see what he's got. He's got the submachine gun, flare, and some bullets. Right, we don't really need anything here at the moment. Guns are just tools for killing people. I don't like it any more. Guns are just tools for killing people. I don't like it any more than you do. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Wow, okay, so he does travel around a bit. Be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. If, uh... It'll be open again tomorrow. It's usually open... If you know what I'm saying, Wesley. See you then. I'd love, uh... I'd love for you to, uh... Take a look at my gun. Down in the Panda Bear. Also, his shop opens from 8 until 8 p.m. till 6 a.m., which is kind of weird. Right, let's swap out our gun while we're here. Um, this is everything we've earned recently. Put our item away. Let's put this uh, 10 millimeter submachine gun away. And then let's take item out. York, please. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a horny boy. And now we've got the uh, official. Fantastic. Oh, there's Keith over there. Still having a banging, rip-roaring time. What have Lily and Keith got to say? Hey, Lily. Agent York. Your speech frightened some of us a little. You should work on being more sensitive. I like they have specific interactions words. because he's already spoken to them. I tried my best to be gentle. So have you? I wonder if it's different for everyone if you've already places. spoken to them. Hmm. Just back. Or if it just changes the initial she dialogue. Part time at the store. She's been acting strange recently. Strange? How? I took the boys along to visit her house today. 
I was just worried, you know, because she hasn't come into work at all after that incident. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just ah. don't understand it. Now that's interesting. That does sound interesting. We need to speak to the Thank boys you. again about this special secret. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Bingo. Yo, Keith, what up, man? Hey, York, you were rocking it large. Rocking it large, bro. Right. Hamming it down. Been on stage like that since elementary school. You made me think, man, like, things can't go on like this. We need, like, some action or something. I was pretty psyched up, you know, before you got on stage. I was like, Dude, oh, God, he started thrusting. Psycho in town. Pretty sweet gig. But now, I mean, dude, that lunatic could be any one of us, man. It could be me, dude. Whack job coming after my family. What if I'm the raincoat killer, man? man? It was way too heavy. You'll catch him. Right, FBI? Of course. I love that he calls me FBI. Yo, FBI, dude. You're right, man. Right on the level. I need to do what's right for my family, man. You lit my soul, man. Thanks, FBI. Wow, 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 wow. Man, Keith is great. Keith might be the best. Might be the best. Hey, Polly's here. Staring at this old agent on her. Hey, Polly, mind if I take this? Thanks very much. Oh, hello. Oh, we got a good time over there, I'm sure. But uh, let's talk to Polly. Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used <laughs> he to... He is amazing. Keith is so I good. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested. But I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really. Thinking about it now. Really, Polly. So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Why is oh, Polly just bouncing up and down? Um, no, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see. What is she doing? Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so I like the idea that he takes longer to retell what the play was about than the play took to happen. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. Wow, dodging the question. Zach, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI. She's members. never seen a play. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zach. Amazing. Hey, what you gonna do about it, huh? Is a uh, hold pot lady? Is another good Twin Peaks reference? If you've uh, if you've ever seen that, you've seen the log lady. This is uh, I guess this uh, this game's equivalent. See ya, Polly. Yeah, she was out of there. My pot is getting cold. Roaming Sigourney, the pot lady. I've got all this pot. You want some pot? Mister, my pot is getting cold. You are. I'm smoking all this pot. To be honest, with the way she behaves, I wouldn't be surprised if she had a, if it was actually just full of weed. No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting cold. You should have left it on the stove and not brought it with you. Oh, you're useless. Zach, we've met all. <laughs> York just staring to the middle distance. She takes the kick. Amazing. Or should I say, she takes the pot? Huh? Yeah? Huh? Is this a is this a phone I can save at? Oh, fantastic! We've spoken to a lot of people. I don't want to, I don't want to lose that progress. Old oh, Jimmy, let's talk to Jim. Not with the kids though. Where are the kids? Are they with Becky? 
Thanks for your help. I wonder where they are. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. That's well, you, Jim. I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. You know, capitalism. Agrees, which is why she lets me take care the of The right this. wing. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. I've been teaching them the basic fundamentals of Marxism. Do more damage than good around here. <laughs> what the scar specifically? The world, don't I? I, have I mean, with a suit like that. Job. But I understand what you mean. Big city boy. I think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zach. Always, uh, always worry of the big city cops. And over here. Well, hello. How's it going? Here's our boy himself. Let's talk to this guy first. I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. Cheers, Jack the Raging Bull. What about the FBI? Are oh, they just super Shut cops? Up. At least give me your name. I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. If you want info, it'll cost you. I only talk to Ben Franklin. I really like his uh, like deep breath animation. I can detain you for a few days, and maybe you'll become more fun to meet. <laughs> <sighs> Zach, this is a waste of time. This for joking. He looks like Paul Phoenix from Tekken with that hair. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, good looking. Nice speech. Of course, of course, the camera pans. Gina the Rose, Jack's wife. And you are? Oh, I'm Gina. Her shorts, shorts aren't even Jack. shorts. That's just like a belt. It really is like there's no, there's no trouser leg. You look pretty revealing. Oh, hey, -oh. this old thing. Oh. You should see some of my other clothes. You? Oh, now you are cool. That scar really is a turn-on. You should come to my station. I'll give you a little extra service. That well. Would be great. I can't believe how expensive gasoline is nowadays. <laughs> I love York Especially so much. Would be great. Now, about my current case. Do you He's wonderful. Anna? Have you seen anything suspicious? That's basically me. I don't That's how I would react in that situation. I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I could actually do with, you know, my car could do with the clean. That would be great, you know. Um, if you could change the oil, I could really appreciate that. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. I mean, we've spoken to everyone, so I guess that makes sense. I like they just auto end it. Back in the hole. It's like the finger guns on the back, like Master Hand from Smash Brothers or something. Jim, sitting there making sure everyone leaves. Greenvale Inhabitants. Boom. We had one continue, we did die to that chap in the elevator. Sadly. Not a perfect run this time. Brown bullhead catfish. A fish rather hard to find in Greenvale. Replenishes a moderate amount of your hunger. Not as much as a turkey sandwich though. Oh god! Deadly premonitions crashed. No! Not like this. Not like this. Why are you going to do me? Why are you going to do me like this video game? I actually want to wrap up shortly, but uh, I'll just hop back in quickly and and see if we can't uh, wrap things up on not on a crash. Did we actually save? I don't know if we did. I might have to get back through that last couple of scenes. All characters appearing in this work are fictitious. Any resemblance to real persons and groups is purely coincidental. No, Kyle, weirdly enough, it's not actually supposed to do that. But it does, however, do that more often than you might have thought.
Or maybe it did save. Maybe we did save right at the end there. During the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another. I don't know if this is just going to be the same. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Nice. Okay. Let's see where we are. That didn't, I was hoping they'd... they'd uh, that does update occasionally. I was hoping it would have <laughs> updated by now, seeing as we've done a few key scenes. Okay, so it must have saved. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and get the progress report too. Okay, and let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All I right. thought we were going for dinner with Emily. Uh, hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's diner. Would you like to come with us? Yeah! I'm glad I peeked at Emily. This is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide Connor says this bit is marvelous. Let's eat with them. <laughs> oh, this is this is a good scene right here. This is uh, some absolute peak deadly premonition coming up. Some peak York, let's say. I'll just let this one play out a little bit. I've been sheriff here for a long time now. And this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Big old burger. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe. Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor. Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. Just pretty Based standard stuff. Until last month. Well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He <laughs> George's face! Used them as utensils in his daily life. To eat from or... As a urine cup. As you do. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. And he'd down it in one gulp. Sounds pretty good. It's a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Emily seems to have taken to it a little less weirdly than the others. For me, he was insane. Sounds about right. Drinking from the skulls. Well, that is one thing. But those he had used to relieve himself. He would then just use them to drink from too. Oh, that's the that's the disgusting bit right there. It's just not Forget about the cutting off the heads and the em clearing, cleaning out the skulls and then drinking coke out of them. That's Don't piss in them first. That's disgusting. Thank you, yep. Agent York. That's... Well, let's talk about something else. All right. You don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. Sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like... 800 age. victims is a lot of victims. A movie or something. For anything. In your eyes, you must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So fundamentally, there is no difference in size. That's one way of looking at it, for sure. Well said, Agent Morgan. 
We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Sure. Of course. But still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me neither. I never I feel the same way as you, Emily. Such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner, waiting on tables. No, <laughs> oh, poor Thomas. He's taking it real hard. He's a young kid. Excuse us, Agent Morgan. <laughs> we should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night. <laughs> I'll leave you to your entire burger, George. Ah. What a time. Ah, Thomas isn't so bad, Con. He's a, he's a, he's a young, naive kid, you know, he's helping out at the police station, but he's, he's not spent too long on the, uh, on the job. Right, now we need to get back to the Great Deer Yard Hotel. And, uh, I think then we'll, we'll wrap things up. Actually, I should, uh... Is there a phone here? No, when I see a phone, or, or there's a phone just across the way. Maybe we'll, uh, save things up before we, uh... Before we drive all the way back to the hotel. Here we go. Hop out of the car, grab this, uh, grab this card of Lillian Graham, you know, just cards of all the inhabitants of the town lying around, as you do. Do I want to save? Yes, I do. Connor says, be right back. Okay, well, we're, we're going to wrap up very shortly. But, uh, I'll catch you in a second. Don't worry. And we'll just, we'll just ping into the map just quickly. Make sure we're going the right way. Okay, so we want to go down Berry Street. So we want to basically go, okay. I see, I see. We make this turn? Yeah, we can. There we go. Fantastic. And then it should just be up here. Hmm? No, nothing. Just my imagination. Oh, it's not up here. How did I get the wrong one again? Is it the next one along? Did I turn one too early? Yeah, I need to swing a left and then swing a right. Gosh damn it. Urgh. I wish you could just make the map a bit bigger. That's one thing I really wish they'd done in the director's cut is just improve the map a little bit. Just let you zoom out or, you know, have some kind of waypointing system. Can't be... I don't know how difficult waypointing systems are to implement, but I can't imagine they're that tough. You know, the tech is out there. It would be really nice and helpful to have that. Welcome back, Connor. Back just in time for the, the closing moments. We'll get back to the hotel. I don't know if we'll sleep. We might just... Unless it, unless it makes us sleep. Cheeky little roll there, as you do. But see, this car, not quite as likely to just completely flip over, which is nice, as the uh, the smaller car is. Also, they didn't really damage it too much, even though we took it onto its side.
Okay, so he's actually going to do something when we get here. Uh, I don't think there's a way to save, though. Unless we go inside. Let, let's just let's pull up. We'll, we'll see what happens. I Oh, this might be the arrival of the other guest, actually. We might actually have a little scene to fill up here. Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. Okay. Oh, this is where it's going to ask us questions. Anna's death. I need to try and remember the answers she here. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct... If you know the answers, shout out. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off and I found something inside her mouth. Do you remember what that was, Zack? What was it we found inside her mouth? A chopper chop? A seed? Or a chip? It was a red seed. That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emma, no one likes a bit of seed in their mouth. Killed, but traces of tears were still evident. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill, and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back, and... One other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? Okay, was it, uh... Was it a bright red raincoat? Some bondage fetish restraints? Or a broken stiletto heel? It was the heel. That's right. A broken stiletto heel. Come on, Con, pull it together. This, with the other evidence suggests that this is before the lumber mill. ...came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna... Miss Stiletto heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. In any case, Miss Stiletto heel may have vital information. We need to find her next. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. Have I forgotten anything? Nope. Ah, oh, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zack? I do. I do remember that. What do you think she was holding on to? Pendant, a round object, a red wig, or a sharp knife. Or well, she had like a round indentation. That's right. Marks on her hand suggest a piece mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo of an upside down piece mark on his back. These two could well be related. But we don't know for sure. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who is out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. He's actually getting into bed this time. Enjoying it's a real nightmare of clipping and polygons, though. So a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back, 
was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zack. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange. Nostalgic and It's a good thing you can't see the lower half of his body right now. Cause he's gone from six to midnight. 3 a.m. Crikey, you'll get to sleep, man. Ellie! Let's have Ellie! I'll eat later! You'll eat right now, young lady. You need to listen to your mother. I want to hear the rest of the story. Eat your I lunch. I forgot about these. Then take a nap. Then I'll tell you the rest. But I want to hear it now. There's no need to rush things. You must live your life at the pace that is right for you. Honey! Are you coming? Yeah, they're weird. I keep forgetting those are a thing. Oh, there's a pup. Willy. Hello. Miss Stiletto heals herself, coming back from out of town, maybe? Oh, and this, uh, this uh, chunky boy is dropping her off. Got a little plant. What a chubby funster. Dinner cleared. Bingo. Get the big bucks. And uh, we'll save it there. So thanks very much for joining. I, I don't know if this, this might actually just carry on. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to hit it anyway. And see. But uh, we're going to wrap things up there. Okay, it's going to put us back in this room. I think we can probably save here, or if not, we can start oh, here next time. Thirsty? Always. Constantly. You, must be very you don't know the half of it, kids. You'll know when you're older. I mean, that's what most people take. That's something put sugar in it. Ah! Oh my gosh! Who are you? My name is Becky. Ah, oh, Becky. We've heard about her. Becky Ames, Anna's friend, and uh, is it Quince? Quince girl. My name is Becky. Anna's friend. My name is Becky. Anna, could you uh, give your friend a slap? She's uh, she's stuck on a loop. Connor says the thirst is real. Hmm. I can't wait till my throat is quenched. Take a sip of coffee and go. Oh, delightful. A mystery door. Oh, the kids are gone. Okay, well, that, uh, I don't think there's a way to save here. So, uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll call it here and next time we'll start from this area again. So, thanks very much for joining. I will, uh, we'll leave on that weird... Uh, cliffhanger. It's been a great time and uh, I'll catch you all on the next stream so if you need to see the archive if you missed any of it if you want to catch up then it'll be on the highlights on Twitch or you can go to youtube.com slash keny2kentv and uh, they'll go up on there along with my other YouTube videos and stuff so 
feel free to check that out as well. I'm also on Twitter at KenY2Ken. You can follow me on there. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining. Cheers everyone that came by. It was good times, good chatting to you. And uh, I'll speak to you all very soon. Bye.